All right, hey everybody, this is Bronson for Unscripted Access, and I am joined by Anthony Ta. Hi there, did you just say Scripted Access? Ah, fuck. Oh, oh well, we're gonna roll with it. This shit... No, whatever. How you doing, Tony Ta? I am really exhausted. Uh, I've been up since 2.30 in the morning with only a one-hour nap. So I'm running on fumes, but that's okay. There's enough fuel left in the tank to power up this next hour or two, and then I can pass out like a freaking heavy rock. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm curious to see what. Yeah, I'm curious to see how that goes because I don't know what my work schedule is for tomorrow, and I guarantee you this podcast is going to end, and I'm going to check the ship line. It's going to be like. Oh, we work at 8 a.m. And I'm be like, fuck, god damn it. Well, let's make this a bitchin' awesome hour, then. All right, great. Hell yeah. All right, we'll find out. Let's start talking about news. So, let's start with the biggest news. Nintendo. Nintendo has repeatedly said they don't want to do mobile. They're not going to cell phones. Cell phones are Nintendo. But they said we would have this Pokemon thing. On smartphones a while back. Nintendo lies a lot. I'm not sure if you're aware of this. They lie. Or maybe a lot. it's just, or maybe it's like, oh, we don't want to do it, and then they got convinced. Oh, okay, we'll do it. You know, like regular human beings. Humans can change their minds, right? Uh, yeah. This, yes, this is true. Um, but that yes, I also think that I think there is a conflict between their Western offices and their, you know, Japanese office. I, yeah, I sometimes can't tell what they're doing. I yeah, like I don't even know what Nintendo's fucking doing. Sometimes freaking, it's like I said, I've always said Nintendo is a constant love hate relationship. One day you freaking love them because they're putting out Majora's masks. You hate them because they don't have any. You love uh, them yeah. because the rewards program was has been reasonably awesome. You hate them because they just killed it and haven't told you what their replacement is yet. Yeah, and I'm still waiting on my CD. Uh, I know it shipped. I'm still waiting on it. I got my CD. Uh, it's pretty nice, actually. Right? Yeah. Right. It's okay. uh, it's not like the Melee disc where the music on the disc is actually different from the game. This is actually music straight from the game. Okay. Which is going to awesome. make for some pretty epic drives when we drive down to E3. Yeah. Just I- settle it with Smash in the car. and. If I am doing that, I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Uh, because... But if we're tired, which I imagine we would be during the final hour, probably something to do. So, or we could just put I... in our iPod and just make it a lot easier on ourselves. Yeah. Uh... Or sorry, not iPod, iPhones. What's okay? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So Nintendo is going mobile or something. Yeah, Nintendo. Nintendo is uh, Nintendo. Uh, has reached a deal with D- DENA. Uh, it is a Japanese mobile company. Uh, they wanted to get a huge Candy Crush-like audience, and they wanted to create something with kind of a daily active user base. So they're partnering with Nintendo. Um, you know, they're, they're dreaming of 100 million users. Uh, after this, both stock and both companies just shot up like crazy. And that's pretty much all they said. So the investors approve. Investors do approve. Do approve. I don't know if like the general gaming audience approves, but if stock prices are growing, that means investors imp- approve. Because investors are the best judge of quality. Because investors know what's the best thing for the consumer. The consumer wants know. more profits. <sighs> I mean, I guess that you know, I guess that's you know, kind of true. Sort of, yeah, yeah, true. Because let's be honest, if you work for said company, you don't want the company's stock to fall down. They start losing money, and next thing you know, your job gets axed. Yeah, that is so, kind of scary. But yeah, so prices have gone up. Uh, there's like a few more small quotes and all that kind of stuff. But basically, Nintendo's IP is going to end up being in the smartphone land. I mean, it's not made by Nintendo specifically; it's just their IP. So. uh 
I don't think it's going to be oh, CDI man. bad, but I kind of can imagine yeah, it's going to be a lot. Yeah, I was of... just about to say, oh man, Philips CDI games. Awesome. That, yeah, but I imagine that Nintendo is going to have a very, very, very strict eye on this. Because the case of the CEI was basically a botched partnership and Nintendo didn't have any oversight over what Philips made. Yeah. Whereas here, I imagine Nintendo's going to... Because Nintendo's like really possessive of their uh, IP. Of everything. So, like, yeah, Nintendo you know. is just like fucking DRM loving. Like, this is the company... Uh... This is the country... This is the company that was like, motherfucker, no CDs, cartridges again... Why? Because fuck piracy. Then they're like, okay, we'll do discs. But because fuck piracy, no DVDs, mini discs. And then on the Wii, they finally fucking caved. Uh, but they had the just spinning in the opposite direction, I think. Some, yeah, that would... That but, would and like, even the Wii U disc uses, like, I imagine the Wii U disc uses some Blu-ray technologies. It uses it's some not, pro- proprietary, like, base of I Blu-ray. know, but it, if you look at the disc, freaking, it's like, it's a blue tint, just like the Blu-ray disc. I imagine it has some Blu-ray tech, it's just not really 100% a Blu-ray disc. Yeah. I think it, I mean, I think the company it made, I don't know, I read, like, on the Wiki article that the company that Nintendo partnered with, I think it's Panasonic... They own some Blu-ray patents or something. Okay. But that... anyways, it's a high capacity disc. So hey, Smash Bros. can be as awesome as they and big as they want it to be. The next Zelda can be as big as they want it to be. So hey, they finally caught up with storage. All right. So. But uh, uh, yeah, I imagine I don't think these are going to be CDI bad, but I can imagine there's going to be. C- a fair amount of mediocrity because since when was a smartphone game awesome that wasn't um game dev story or infinity blade those are like the only two like mobile uh smartphone type games i've ever played hearthstone hearthstone's gonna be out soon hearthstone's mobile yes that's that's gonna and, be on um, soon yeah and i think some uh old final fantasies were ported to that system too and so did grand theft auto 3 Oh but, yeah, also uh, uh yeah. the old Final Fantasy and old like Square games, those got moved. Yeah, those got on there too. Um uh, Yeah, so it's gonna be really good. Oh yeah, and Nintendo's also like having some hopes that people who get into um Nintendo's kinda of hoping it's like, oh, if they discover Mario through this way, then they'll discover our consoles. Which actually is actually not a bad hope. I mean... Because, personally for me, how I found out about Pokemon wasn't the Pokemon game. I didn't actually knew the games existed until later. I found out about Pokemon because of the TV show. Then I found out about that there were games. And then I found out later afterwards that the TV show is based on the game, not the other way around. So, yeah, who knows? Yeah, and uh, I also uh, and I also can imagine this kind of helping re- Nintendo financially be a little bit healthier. Yeah, so uh, a couple of side news stories has come out of this. The first one is Miyamoto is not going to be on mobile. Uh, they speaking to Time Magazine, he said currently the development of Wii U titles is what he's working on. He's currently working on Star Fox and Zelda U, um, with Star Fox taking the major focus. Um, he says it's a possibility, but it's not happening anytime soon. So ev- everyone, yeah, that makes sense. Everyone losing their shit. Please stop. Miyamoto uh, is not making the next Super Mario on a smartphone. Yeah, it's okay. Conf- this is this is like this is DNA making it. I I mean even With if like um. Yeah, like, I, you know, even if Nintendo, or even if uh, Miyamoto were to do that, Nintendo does work on these games with them. I, like, I'm kind of curious what games they're going to make, because a lot of get- Nintendo games are, like, games that you need, like, really precise control for. I had like, the exact same thought. I'm just like, Miyamoto's not going to approve of this, con- approve of the standard touchscreen smartphone control plan. Like, I mean, you could do Animal Crossing, no problem. 
In fact, you could also, attempt to sell a peripheral that links up via Bluetooth, uh, but I don't think that would work too great. I mean, like, Animal Crossing would probably work fine. In fact, it'd probably be better. Uh, Pokemon you could do okay. But, like, Smash, Mario Kart, Zelda, Kurt, anything. Like, Mario especially. Mario cannot be done on a fucking touchscreen. Like, that yeah. would be fucking impossible. Uh, like, that. that is some... Fucking developer nightmare is what that is. Um, so, uh, IGN asked some people like what they wanted from this, and what Nintendo games they want. Uh, a couple of suggestions have been Super Mario RPG and Super Mario Kart. I don't agree with Super Mario Kart. Super Mario Kart, no. Turn-based stuff, yes. You can do turn-based. Mario it- Party? Like, mm. it, 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 if it was a no, specific, no, no, no. The mi- mini what, games are going to be a little here's what, hard no. to figure out. Okay, if you make your mini games all based around touchscreens, like this, this wouldn't be like a port. This would have to be like, this is Mario like, Party Mobile. <laughs> why oh, put, why buy? God, just, why buy a hundred one dollar dumb smartphone games when you just buy Mario Party on your phone? Yeah, and get a hundred uh, mini games. Yeah. Like, that's part of the logic, and these phones can play games with each other. Like, I play Words with Friends with people. So, I mean, like, we can all have the horrible nightmare of you, John, Brennan, and I playing Mario Party on our smartphones. This is a terrible idea. No, let's not talk about this. Um, Yeah, most of the games people are suggesting, in my opinion, are actually kind of retarded. Like, Mario World, Super Smash Brothers, like, none of these games would control it, Yes, it. Tommy, can you use your touchscreen to do a side smash A and then shield to dodge immediately afterwards? Fire Emblem would be fine. Fire Emblem would be fine. It's a turn-based, so that's fine. Uh, Pokemon is fine, but that's not going to happen, guys. Like, yeah, po- Nintendo, no. They Sorry, need to like, Pokemon sells Fire a 3DS. Emblem might. Fire, Fire Emblem might. Fire Emblem MemorialWare might. Fire Emblem I can definitely see working. I mean, it's freaking like... I mean, if chess can work on a phone, Fire Emblem can too. That's my logic. Um, Let's see, what else could they put on there? Uh, Yeah, I can't really think of much, honestly. Uh, it's gonna be re- it's gonna be really interesting. Um, Nintendo occasionally puts out really interesting, dumb stuff. Like um, like in the case of Pokemon, it isn't like they just only make Pokemon because they also make uh, spinoffs too. Like Pokemon Conquest, it's basically Pokemon- this. It's basically the Sega game with the Pokemon face on it, and then there's Shovel, and then there's Charles A, and then there was Puzzle League. Puzzle which League would be te- good. It's just Tetris Attack with a Pokemon face on it. Uh, all right, let me let me pitch this one to you. Let me pitch this one: Pokemon Snap, but as an augmented reality game that uses phone cameras. Smartphone. Hmm. That would be fucking sick. You are at you know you're you're on your daily commute. You are fucking you know. You, you're on the bus, you're driving past all these areas, you pull out your camera and just snap, snap, snap. All the Pokemon. Po- Pokemon snap with, aug- you mean a- augmented reality, that AR stuff? Yeah. Why the hell haven't they done this with the 3DS yet? That, 3DS has got yeah. a freaking 3D camera sitting right in front of it. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, here are some suggestions from the IGN editors. Uh, some of them have been discussed, some of them haven't. Uh, Brain Age. Alright. That can work, yeah. Uh, we Elite... fit. How? Well, it's a pedometer. Oh, right. Because right. you remember that Nike stuff they put on iPod Touches back in the day? They still put them on iPods. Yeah, you can, you, can, you, can, you can do some fitness related stuff with the, Actually, with the, the, the accelerometer, uh, I think. This is something uh, my friend uh, Sarah uses to stay fit. And God damn, it works pretty well for her because it's like she stays cosplay fit. Like she does legit cosplay. And what it is is it's an app that you use on your iPhone. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but but it's like zombies like 30 yards to the right run. Zombies 
like five feet behind you run faster. Yeah. You know? Oh. And if you do, you imagine you just running and listening to your music, and all of a sudden you hear a zombie over your earbuds, and you think they were right next to you. That's like yeah, a that's... great motivational way for you to start sprinting. Yeah, yeah, and it actually like tracks you in game, so it uses GPS and stuff. So if you're, you know, you're, so it tracks you in game and whatnot. So like, if you act, if you don't, if you don't start running, they fucking eat you. I hope die. that app doesn't tell you to run into the ghetto to run away from zombies that have plagued the downtown area. I mean, I live in the ghetto and run through the ghetto already, so for me, that's not much of an issue. I mean, like the really bad parts. Oh yeah. So, um, well, yeah. well, I mean, it gives you multiple paths, so I don't... Anyway, Animal Crossing we talked about. Uh, mm. Elite Beat Agents, that'd be cool. Rhythm game, I can see it. Dogs, that's a no-brainer. And then the rest what we kind of discussed. Yeah. Um, so, uh, spe- as long as we're on Nintendo news, um, uh, suppose the code name for the next Nintendo system has been linked. It's called uh, the Nex or the NX. I imagine that's just a code name. That's not going to be the actual name they give to the system. Uh, well, no duh. The GameCube wasn't called the Dolphin. Yeah, it's just going to come out and comes with the Dolphin logo and comes in ocean blue. I mean, bitchin'. Yeah, yeah. And then the the fucking Wii U was Project Cafe, which I don't even, dude. Co- I you know, like I'm so glad that like. Companies are using dumbass code names still. I I like it. Hey, did you know the latest Android update 5.0 is called Lollipop? And before that, it was called Kit Kat. Okay, well, Android has always had candy things, and that's stupid in its own right. Well, but, it's code names. Because what are we like, supposed to call it? Supreme R35X2GF? No, but like, look at the co- <laughs> like, the code names for video game consoles are supremely stupid. Well, I'm I, pretty aware. <laughs> like, I don't know what, like, the PS3 and PS2 always kind of were known as what they were. But PS4 was Orbis. That's Xbox, that's all right. Xbox One was Durango. Uh... The Wii U was Project Cafe. The Wii was Project Revolution. Revolution uh, made some yeah, sense. It, made, I mean, yeah. it was a really, I mean, it's a really basic kind of eh word, but revolution, yeah. The For the time, it made sense. The 360 was the Xenon. Like which how... they eventually, yeah, which is the name they also given to the completely broken motherboards that <laughs> originally shipped <laughs> with the damn thing. It's called the Xenon boards. That's what they call it. The second revision they had was Zephyr, which is basically Xenon with HDMI. Then they called it um, Falcon? Then Jasper? Yeah, it was Falcon, then and Jasper. Then, then Valhalla, and then Opus was like a Falcon without the HDMI port to replace the Xenon boards that came in for no, warranty repairs. I'm telling you right now, Sega had the best fucking code names. Okay? Ah, uh, okay. Let's hear it. Alright, All right. the Dreamcast was Samurai. Ooh. The, the Sega Saturn was the Aurora. How fucking sweet is that? Like, Damn. that is so fucking hype, right? Like, you hear the Sega Samurai is coming. How fucking awesome does that Sega sound? Sega Sanshiro comes right in. Do they Michael, have, do you, Michael Bay's your way into delivering... No, I haven't watched that epic rap yet. Dude, you need to. It's so fucking sick. The fu- so for those of you who don't know, over on ScrewAttack.com, there is a death battle between Chuck Norris and Sagata Sanshiro. And if you're wondering who Sagata Sanshiro is, the video will tell you. But basically, he's the best video game marketing campaign of all time, and he is the biggest badass of all time. So, yeah. Oh, and he... And uh, you're wondering what how he marketed Sega. He beat the shit out of people for not playing Sega Saturn. Well, that's um, great for the community. Oh, and he trained by carrying a giant Sega Saturn on his back, and then he'd stop and train his gaming skills by playing it. Okay, wow. And he could defeat an entire nightclub filled with people with just three moves. And, uh, yeah, no, just go watch. Go watch. Go watch. Go watch now. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, like, it, it's amazingly stupid. 
Uh, um, code names. What's the uh the Xbox was the direct Xbox. Yeah, that's uh... that one was lazy. So lazy. I mean it's like, oh we got Direct X, let's just call it Direct Xbox. Nah, that's too late, let's shorten it. Xbox. Um Nintendo had a but... pretty cool one for the Nintendo 64. I mean Nintendo 64 sounds like a really lazy name. Because it's um, basically 64-bit systems. Like, oh, Nintendo 64, but Nintendo Ultra 64. Let's see. The Sega Nomad was known as Project... Let's see. Hold on. I'm looking it up. I had it. I just had it. But then I, like, stopped reading the article for a second to look at something else. Damn it. It it sounded really cool, though. Damn it. Hold on. Give me a second. What was it called? Wait, what system are you looking at? The Sega Nomad. Project Venus. The Nomad is essentially a portable Genesis, right? Yeah, pretty much. That ate up batteries faster than anything you can imagine, and it took, like, D-sized batteries. Yeah, it was basically... That died in one hour. Yeah, do you remember the stupidity of the Game Gear? It was like that, but even worse. It also yeah. had a TV <laughs> tuner built in, which that was fucking stupid. Oh, so. man. Well, you gotta think about it. It's the 90s. You couldn't watch shit on your phone yet. So what could you do? You had to eat up double the batteries that costed maybe ten dollars a pack and watch television. I actually yep. had a Local professor. Channel, though. Yeah, and it's over the air, so you could only get like channels one through eleven or twelve. If they did sell that in America, right? Because if they did, you only get channels like two to ten. Yeah, like you got two, like in the in Nevada, you got two, four, eight, and eleven. Yeah, so two, three, eleven. But the, the no, oh man, freaking! I had a I had a teacher who had a Sega Nomad, and I looked at it, and freaking, I'm just like, they actually thought this was a good idea. Yeah, it was. They, they actually retarded. thought this was a good idea, and believe it or not, they actually sold a million of these, but it's like a portable Genesis sounds freaking awesome. It's like that dude Ben Heck, I mean, back in the day, he got pretty famous for making a portable Xbox 360. Which, you know, what yeah. a better way to make an Xbox 360 melt than to turn it into laptop form. But, that's besides the point. But Ben Heck, like, made a portable 360. And now they have, like, freaking these console kits now, where where uh, with an LCD screen you can make your PS3 or PS4 more portable. I don't think they come with batteries, but, you know, it's something there. But... Well, the, they're starting to have electrical outlets on planes. And yeah, and what cars. I've, what I have seen more often in planes, and I found this to be fucking awesome and hilarious, is people will plug their Wii U into the plane and just play games on the tablet. Hey, you know what? That's, That's good. Not... That's not the worst idea in the world. The I'm Wii not... U is relatively portable. Yeah, like relatively. I mean, even with the power brick, it's like I could fit one of those in my messenger bag. Like I'd have to take out my laptop probably, but I could do it. Yeah. Now I'm uh, pretty sure what some of you are thinking. Well, with my PS4, I could just remote play with the Vita. Yeah, PS4 is quite a lot bigger though. Yeah. Well, actually, PS4 is only, like it's the size of two Wii U's, but you don't have a power brick. So, it's true, know. but it's still pretty big. Yeah, like in, in, in remote play, that shit varies on how well it works. Like my house is made of brick, so I can't really go far with it. Same thing with the Wii U. In fact, it makes me very angry that like one of the big features of the Wii U I can't really use out past like the first portion of my living room. Fucking just like radio signals do not want to go through stone apparently. Um, uh, well, concrete especially yeah um but yeah it's just <laughs> the nomad is the second nomad a commercial failure is like i'm like you think freaking portable genesis with one hour battery life that's that's like playing your laptop on battery it's not very good that way i'm looking up like uh, oh okay i think i have the history of console code names right here all right I got some. I got them. I found some of them anyway. Cool. Um, okay. The the DS, the original DS, was called Nitro. The Game Boy Advance was called Atlantis. The uh, the N sixty four was fucking Project Reality. 
<laughs> How sick does that sound? Project Reality, because the dawn of 3D is now upon us. Uh, of course, look, we look back today and we're just like, what? But back in the time, 3D was like, that was huge. Uh, PlayStation PlayStation was called PSX. What's that? Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Sony. <sighs> Uh, hold on, I, like, okay, I found an article about that, but I'm gonna try and find more. Um, okay. Give me a second. Because I know there has to be some other golden ones, right? Like, that, like there has to be. Okay, let's see, if you go to that one. Oh, sorry, it, the Dreamcast wasn't Samurai. It was still badass, though. Katana. Yeah. Wow, I think it was a good way of, like, naming stuff. Um. All right. Let's see. But yeah, we'll go through uh, a few more code names then. Uh, all right. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's all I can find. Sorry, I couldn't. Okay. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, How about what the end gauge was? Project. Let's make this terrible fucking idea. <laughs> How about the Gizmondo? <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, I sent you. Did I ever send you? Or the Atari you the... Jaguar. I'm gonna look it up. Did I ever send you the podcast where the Giant Bomb and GameSpot guys talked about the launch of the Gizmondo? Uh, no, I haven't. It's pretty fucking hilarious. That guy would later go to, like, crash his Ferrari. Like, he would, like, fucking just totally total a Ferrari, the owner of that company. Yeah. Yeah, was... I've heard of that. That is just like, holy crap. I remember watching a video about that. Oh. Yeah, that was... Dude, the, the Gizmondo was pretty fucking stupid and terrible. Like, I'm not gonna... I am not I am not here to defend Gizmondo, for sure. Yeah. Hey, Atari 2600. Its original prototype was called the Stella. Yeah, uh, and then the 5200 was called Pam. Which, man, that was a, that's a really bad called, name. It, well, Pam, the system, P-A-M. Well, the system wasn't very good anyways. Yeah. It was backwards compatible, though. It was backwards compatible, um, but you had a broken controller instead of a working one. Yeah. Because those early analog yeah. sticks. Broken. Yeah, because they didn't... The analog sticks didn't recenter themselves, which that in itself is fucking unbelievably weird. Yeah, I freaking remember the Angry Video the angry video Game Nerds episode on the 5200. Classic, yeah. awesome. I, he actually did a really good episode on the Genesis Super Nintendo console wars. Like, it was really good. Hey, you want to know some other stupid ideas? How about the Sega CD? Well, okay, well, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't the worst idea, but then that the 32X happened. Yeah, the, the, now, like, the Sega CD actually was a pretty okay idea. I mean, like, it was a little too early for its time. Yeah. Probably. Because that, that was, was just before, that was before the, that was like the Super Nintendo days, and CD Tech was kind of new and... As an experiment, Sega, it was pretty awesome, but... Sega fucking loved pushing new ideas. Like, Sega fucking... Like, did you... Have you ever heard of Sega Channel? No, I haven't. This is really cool. It was only in select markets, but what you did is you hooked this add-on to your Genesis, which, God, that's way too common of a statement, but still. Um, and it hooked into your cable. And you're like, what the fuck? Why is it hooking to your cable? Well, every month it would give you a selection of new games to stream over your cable. Okay. So like like one month there'd be Mortal Kombat, like another month there'd be this or that. It was the internet before the internet. And fun fact, the Sega Saturn was one of the first ever game consoles to play online. In fact, you can actually still play Sega Saturn games online if you can find someone to play with. Seriously? Yeah, because it's direct connection over dial up. Oh. Yep. That's uh, cool. Yeah, but that's. It's dial up. Yeah, it's super stupid, but it's super awesome at the same time. Well, yeah, well, uh, tech. Still new. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, Sega really was all about pushing new tech. Like, the fucking Dreamcast. It's really and Dream... expensive because they, it probably shows up a little too early. Oh, for sure. Like, look at the Dreamcast having, like, all that Can you imagine the tech they're going to do now? Like, if this was Sega today, they would probably push the Blu-ray for... No, they probably wouldn't push the Blu-ray format. Uh, what would they push? 
They they would definitely be pushing a six core processor. Yeah, when everyone else is living in the age of three. Yeah, and then fucking they would have. But no, Sony did that for them. Uh, well, okay, so if, okay, if we're talking like, are we talking like our current gen, like PS4, or if they are around, if if they somehow managed to, if they limp- had sur- if they had survived with Dreamcast and was going to compete with a PS3 and Xbox 360, what would they have come up with? They probably would have done an online network very similar to Xbox Live because they they were all about the internet. Like, they wanted the internet future to get here as fast as fucking possible. Like, you gotta remember, the Sega Dreamcast came with a fucking modem. Uh, yeah, which is pretty darn advanced at the time. Because the yes. GameCube was an add-on. The PS2 was an add-on. Xbox... Uh, Xbox, had, had it built, Xbox had Ethernet built in. It they had, were fun. It, it had Ethernet, but cable internet wasn't exactly the biggest thing yet. In the early uh, there, was 2000s. A, there was actually an add-on for the Dreamcast uh, that you could take the mo- the dial-up modem out of it and put on the cable modem if you were if you had that. Like if okay. you were one of the three people in the United States who had cable the di- internet in, in 2000. Um, Great. So yeah, like Microsoft. So like yeah, they probably would have pushed internet pretty hard. Um, they would have definitely pushed uh, downloadable games. And like indie titles, because Sega was all about making fucking just super weird games. Like you look at like the history of the Saturn and the Genesis and the Dreamcast, they had a lot of really awesome games, but a lot of fucking weird games. Um, yeah, man. So I think it would have been very similar to the Xbox 360. Like, like, like that exact plan. It would have been that. Like it, it would have been that pretty much. Like spot on fucking up and down it would have been that except it probably would have had it would have had an hd dvd player built in oh like that would have been the difference oh okay like that yeah so i don't know man uh that's sega was a weird company that did a lot of stupid shit i think it's a bit early to be taking pre-orders you know the wii u will be i think that the new system the earliest the new Nintendo system can come out, getting back to the main point, is next year. Earliest? The, I imagine 2016, they announce it, 2017 it'll come out. Because, no, like, I think the earliest that it can come out is November 2016, because then it's four years. For me, Real- I, think it, I think 2017 makes more sense. 2017 does make more sense. Because 2016 yeah, does- is when they're going to announce it, because I don't think they're going to announce it this year's E3, because if they do, I'll be pissed. Uh, dude, everyone will be pissed. They can't, They wouldn't do it. I am saying it's like that the Wii they U are... is slowly gaining momentum, and then you just crushed it with a new system already. New system announcement, I should say. Um, like I think, like realistically, I think they would announce. Like the, the the I'm saying this is the earliest, not the realistic scenario, but this is the earliest because Nintendo wants to get away from the fucking Wii U as soon as they fucking can. Very similar to what they did with the GameCube. They announce at Tokyo Game Show of this year and come out, which is what they did with the Wii in 2005. And then they, uh, you know, they talked about it at E3, but they didn't fucking fully announce it until Tokyo Game Show. And this was three years into the GameCube's life. And then they fully released the Wii November of the following year, four years after the GameCube. So. I see something very similar to that with the Wii U, uh, if they want to go early. Uh, what I personally would want them to do is announce E3 2016, launch November 2017. Yeah, because by the time 2017 rolled around, just about all your heavy hitters and major franchises have already came out on the system. Not only that, but you also, you know, that way you will have time to have fucking launch games. Yeah. And tell third parties that you actually mean something serious now and they proceed to laugh at you again. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I just remember that, uh, what was it? They had that developer montage video where it's like, yeah, we were making games for the Wii U. Hmm. Yeah. I think they had the guy from E3 come up. Yeah, and, and it was all fucking games from like. Other, Mass Effect 3. Yeah, Assassin's like Creed was, Black Flag. It was all shit that was out already. No, it wasn't even Black Flag. It was 3. 
It was Assassin's Creed they actually 3. Do, Ubisoft actually put in the effort to actually make uh, Watch Dogs and Assassin's Creed Black Flag happen before they gave up or something. Yeah, before they finally said, oh, fuck it, this thing's not happening anymore. Um, so, um, God, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm saying that ideally I want it coming out November 2017. Um, I want I want a quad-core processor with a graphics card that is... Okay, it, well, I, yeah, okay, tech is good, but I don't think tech will solve Nintendo's problems. Oh, I don't. I'm just saying I want something a little more modern. Quad core, and then Microsoft said, like, we got eight cores. They, yeah, they'll probably go six for their next Because system. more cores is better. Cores is everything. Man, <laughs> welcome to the GameSpot It's forums. like, hey, freaking even NVIDIA is like, holy shit. Like, Nvi- like, John and I, we were, like, reading the NVIDIA's, like, you know marketing sheet on their geforce website on the new uh shield android tv console thingy yeah and it says it has a 256 core maxwell processor and i'm just sitting there and i'm like i'm just reading a bunch of marketing bullshit on this sheet because it has 256 gpu processors maybe but those cores aren't the same as a cpu core so i mean uh, yeah man it's marketing (sighs) It's like when Microsoft said, we've got 1.4 billion transistors, and, you know, we made a joke about how they counted everything, including the ones in the CD drive. Just, <laughs> they so, they could, did. So, just so they could sound remotely competitive to the PlayStation. Which, I mean, the PlayStation 4, in theory, is fucking, like... In theory, it, it's like 1.81 teraflops, they say. Yeah, well, but, well no, I, I'm saying that, in theory, the PS4 is, like... 33% more powerful than the Xbox One. Yeah, but then DirectX 12 is going to happen, and I don't know the, how much of that gap is going to be closed, Then intend, and then, you know, Sony says, oh, we have a team dedicated to make sure that the PS4 will never, ever, ever be slower than an Xbox One. I wouldn't doubt that. And, like, I freaking, and, then, my, and then, of course, you hear, read stupid, crazy stories like, 400% gain with Drex X12. And I'm sitting here and I'm just like, guys, that is like with some AMD card that was pushing only three frames three frames a second. And you got it bumped up to 12 frames a second. Ooh, 400%. <sighs> Ooh. But still God. unplayable. Marketing. Um, Alright, so we should move on to the next piece of news. The next piece of news, yes. Uh, so... Hey, Anthony, you're looking for an Xbox One, maybe, sort of, kind of, not really. Mm, depends if they've got a really good deal this year. Alright, so, $350 for just the console. That sounds okay, right? Yeah, kind of. How, how do you feel about the Halos? Well, I like, um... God damn it, there's, like, noise playing. I can hear the car. Ah, sorry, it's just some stupid ad played through my head, through my earbuds. Freaking I'm, video ads. See, this is anyway. this. Anyway, sorry. We, how do you feel about the Halos? Uh, well, I really, really, really like Halo Reach. All right, how would you feel about Halos one, two, three, and four, and the live action series Nightfall, all remastered in high def? With Halo 2 getting the complete remaster treatment. Isn't that the Master Chief Collection? I'm not done. And ODST coming later this year. That is the Halo Master Chief Collection? Yes, they're doing, um, they, they're doing a bundle. It's the No Longer Broken Collection, as I like to call it. <laughs> maybe. The last, the, maybe. No, the, no, the last patch finally fixed the shit. It finally works, 100%. Really? So they just need an extra five months? Damn, it's, it's Who like... Who knew? It's, it's like... Well, that it's like, oh, just ago, shove so the game out months. so we get all the sales, and if everyone gets angry, we'll fix it, apologize, and everything will be okay again. We'll, we'll give them another Halo game. See, yeah, see? We'll release something, anger them, and then, you know, treat them nicely, and then they'll cling to us. What's that called I mean, again? That's the Dennis. Stock- Dennis. Uh, the, the, it's also known as Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah. 
I I completely forgot about the Genesis Playing system. Playing mind games here. I, I actually they completely release a forgot broken about product. The... You get angry, and then they say, "Actually, we truly care about you." See, see, we're sorry. I, I, I feel I... like that's what Microsoft did with the Xbox One. Also, they basically announced the worst system they could possibly think of, and then over time, slowly try to convince people that they actually care about gamers by very slowly reintroducing things that make sense and should have been done in the first place. So. I, so are you saying crazy they're running theory. the Dennis system? I don't know. It's just some crazy, stupid joke I run around, but if it's actually true, that would be kind of scary. Because you think about it, the Xbox One is actually an okay system now that people actually want to buy. Yeah. I, I, when really, I it, was, it wasn't that long ago when they freaking announced the worst system ever. I bought one really fucking early on, too. I know, but that's when they said, okay, guys, you can actually play your used games. Okay, guys, we're not locking discs to your system. Okay, I, guys, I mean, we're sorry. Okay, you don't need an internet connection. Four months into the life cycle, oh, we're dropping Connect. Yeah, freaking, they're uh, like, oh, but Xbox is part of the Connect ecosystem. I'm just like, dude, the moment they made it optional, I just knew they were going to drop it because, seriously, the PlayStation 4 is outselling the Xbox One partly because it's $100 cheaper. And I mean, now yeah. the Xbox One is $50 cheaper. And I'm just like, see, there you go. They need to compete on price, too. I mean, they're still getting their asses beat. But not yeah, as bad. but not but not as badly, and their aggressive price wars during the holiday season actually, actually paid off. Yeah, they actually won the holiday season, but that didn't close the gap at all. Um, yeah, man, I don't fucking know how to feel about like. I mean, it's great that like now that the Halo Collection is uh, not fucked, and that DLC is coming later this year. Like that's that game is like the best value you can get on these consoles right now because there's Which not is a good, R- good like there's not a good rpg out for them yeah you know, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Anthony. i mean yeah see I, it's i'm not joking if i bought an xbox one right now it literally the only use the only practical use i have for it is for it to be my forza box that's you'd it. also probably play halo with me because i mean occasionally like, really occasionally like, yes like really what the fuck else are you gonna do i don't uh, know but, yeah. <laughs> but, but the thing uh, is is that what's gonna about get me to buy an xbox one well i'm pretty sure microsoft's gonna go back to aggressively pricing consoles for this holiday season right yeah I mean, you'll probably, they you'll... really 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 want to like they're like they were like doing everything they could to try and catch up to Sony and not getting knocked out of the ring for good. And then so Sony I imagine, honestly just said, eh, we'll bundle a game with it and coast. Uh, let's just bundle two games that already came... We'll just bundle two prettier versions of games that came out last year. There I mean, you go, right, guys. Like, like, if you haven't played those games yet, for whatever reason, they're awesome games. I know. It's still pretty awesome. Like, Nintendo had the best bundle. It was like, you get Super Mario 3D World, you get Donkey Kong, and I'm just like, wow. And you get... Nintendo Land, and uh, there's another game. Mario Kart? Too. No, Smash. It was Smash. Yeah, you get all of that, and that's like the best Black Friday, and it sold the worst. Yeah, and it was pretty uh... Um then, But like... here's the thing, though. What's going to get me to buy an Xbox One, what will make me really seriously consider one, is that I could just feel that Forza 6 is going to happen, and they're probably going to have a system bundle where they're going to put in Forza 6 into an Xbox One so, and sell it for $300. So, I'm telling you right now, uh, uh, this is what I'm predicting. I'm actually not predicting a, a Forza bundle. I think that there's going to be two bundles this holiday season. One is going to be a special edition Halo console that's like blue or something. With Halo 6 or something. With or Halo 5. 5, five sorry. Let's get ahead. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. No, um, sorry, I don't know why I was thinking six. And then the other one, because it's it's exclusive to Xbox, it's going to be a Tomb Raider bundle. Which, mm. how? Which how? Like that last Tomb Raider sold really, really well. Like, and they want their version of Uncharted, and that's going to be the closest thing they get. So, yeah, and Shadow 4 is delayed. So, to, which we'll talk about that next. Yeah. That bums me up really bad. I mean, like, here's the thing. Like, if you have one of the systems, it's really hard to justify getting the other one. 
Yeah, well, I have a PS4 right now, and the only reason I could think of to get an Xbox One is, oh, I want to play Forza. But that's I it. Want... And even then, it's like, well, there's Gran Turis- Turismo is going to happen eventually. I know Forza is more fun to toy around with, but still, <laughs> Gran Turismo. Yeah. And like, there you go. the thing that ever like everyone's talking about, like how, so you know, so, you know, Sony doesn't have any exclusives. Sony doesn't have any exclusives. That's because they haven't announced any of them. You know, like they they just have not announced any of these things. This system is selling because of fucking indie games. You know, like, like you know, what the hell? It is. Like, the, I mean, it it's indie games with marketing and a couple other things, but, like, you know, like, what is Sony Santa Monica working on? What is Sony Bend working on? We obviously know what Polyphony Digital is working on. Like, that's fucking obvious. <laughs> they, live, they live in their offices for it. That's how crazy yeah, they, they are they, about they, it. Yeah, they, you know, like... Yeah, you know that that is a good point freaking like last year the ps4 sold like crazy even though the only three exclusives we could think of was infamous club, a spin-off infamous. of infamous and a driving game that's it we literally okay. checked the list like we don't know what G- gorilla games is doing like they made kill zone and they have two teams so one of them made kill zone and is probably working on another kill zone what is the the other one is supposedly working on RPG? We haven't seen it yet. Media Molecule. They made Tear Away for the Vita. Came out in 2013. They're working on something for the PS4. Naughty Dog's obviously working on Uncharted 4. That's obviously not out till next year. That's a bummer, but it happens. And there's also so much shit coming out this year. That's kind of What's actually a studio relief. that does Journey and Fly. <clears throat> uh, I forgot, but uh, anyway. Uh, Sony Bend made Uncharted Golden Abyss, Resistance Retribution, and the Siphon Filter games. And they're working on something for the PS4. Sony Cambridge did uh, Killzone Vita and Little Big Planet PSP. And they're at Medieval, and they're working on something. Sony Japan is. They're working on The Last Guardian, in quotes, which I think they're really just in their office eating sandwiches. It's um, going to be like something along the lines of a Final Fantasy 15, right? Yeah. Um, Which, you know, it's a, well, at least people are hoping because everyone's talking about, oh my god, Final Fantasy 15 is the most awesome thing we've ever seen all year kind of hype they're, going on they're right also, now. They're also working out on working on Gravity. They're also working on Gravity Rush 2 for the Vita. The first Gravity Rush was a great game, so that's awesome. Sony London is SingStar. Oh, Which okay. they've so, got that already out on the PS4. Yeah, so they're just working on DLC for that and making that better. Sony okay. San Diego continues to make baseball games. And they'll be the show. Sony Santa Monica is probably working on God of War 4. Dude, God of War, PS4. How huge That's can what, it be? Like, like they, they said, all right, you know that whole stupid PS3 thing where you had to put two TVs together? You're going to have to do this for this game. Uh, They closed Studio Liverpool. Sucker Punch just came out with Infamous. Uh, Hold on. Unless Sucker Punch is working on another slide. There's the Drive Club guys. That's Evolution. I I mentioned them. That just came out. Incognito, who did Calling All Cars and Warhawk, and hasn't been mentioned since. So... Fucking question mark there. Uh, Big Big, which I believe closed down, and Zipper Interactive, which definitely closed down. Okay. So, uh, yeah. And I would love, and Incognito hasn't made a game in six years. No, seven years. If they came out tomorrow and said Warhawk 2 or Downhill Domination 2, I would be like, take everything you need. All of it. Just all the money. All the money. You can have it all if I get another Warhawk. Cool. Uh, hold on. Who developed Starhawk? Because it wasn't the same guys. Lightbox Interactive and Santa Monica. Which, hold on. I'm going to check to see what Lightbox is working on. 
Okay, they're working. They worked on an indie game called Plunder Knots, and then are working on another secret project for the PS4. All these fucking secret projects for PS4. All of these. The C3 could be pretty awesome. You never know. Like Sony could fucking just be like Sony could do what Microsoft did, like uh, or Nintendo did in like 2010, where they're like 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 in 2010, Nintendo announced all this insane shit. And then Sony could do the same thing this year, hopefully. Um, and this is already a pretty crazy year. And back to Final Fantasy XV real quick. Uh, you know, Final Fantasy XV, everyone who's played that demo keeps telling me it's great. Which gives me high hopes. So, uh, Final Fantasy XIII was very well loved in Japan. Anthony, there's... There's only up I mean, from here for that franchise. It obviously looks very pretty. I mean, obviously a Final Fantasy game has to look pretty. So obviously it's a given that their freaking effects in that game looks almost like something. It looks like some awesome CG, some movie CG grade quality right there. I, so um, one thing about that game... Did like you this... ever watch that video of the freaking giant summon they have for Ramu or something? Yeah. That it's was freaking ridiculous. What? No, that game, uh, like, at first I just, I was like, yeah, this is kind of interesting. The action scenes look cool, whatever, and I'll check it out when it comes out. And then they showed that it's a road movie, or I guess road game. Well, you that kind of makes sense, kid. because Versus 13, 13 Versus kind of had that same thing going on, right? And Versus nope. 13, they really? Because I thought, I remember seeing a screenshot of the dude sitting in the car. Like, that's it. They did, like, everything else they showed made it look like a a regular Final Fantasy game. So, like, they had... The fact that they've shown, like, this road movie thing, I was like, that sounds really cool. And then they're like, oh, Could yeah, Could be we... pretty linear, too. You know what? That's... You know what? Linear isn't always but, bad. But on a road trip, that makes more sense than running north. Yeah, like, in Final Fantasy thirteen, it made You were running north. Sense. You were running like, north down corridors all day. It's like, why the fuck am I always going north? You know? Uh, but this actually makes sense and also the they just said all right we're gonna do a combat system like kingdom hearts which to me says fuck that's cool i'm i'm down with that oh uh, so i don't know it looks really neat i have high hopes i'm not like i'm not like you know i didn't people bought final fantasy type zero just to play the demo i'm not in that camp i'm very much in the it's like the eh. camp of people who bought crackdown except i'm pretty sure type zero is better than crackdown but I don't you know, know. Same idea. The, People buy Crackdown crack, only crack because down was okay. it was okay. But goddamn, why did they have to make a new Crackdown? The fuck, freaking like Crackdown's okay, but I freaking hate that an agent announcer narrator freaking Duke. Just someone stab his throat out, please. I, I, I don't even I know if he was the same. Hate game. I didn't him. Play it's it. just like. Agent, what are you doing? Agent, she's close. Agent this, agent that, agent this. Just shut the fuck up, you stupid agency man. The only good thing you were good for was telling me you were that I'm working for the bad guys. That's all you're fucking good for. All the other times, you're just like my fucking mom. Okay, that's the wrong way of putting it. You're not like my fucking mom, but you're a freaking nanny. I, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, man, I'm... Stop being my team mom. I'm a super. He I'm a superhero, and I'm not afraid to use these muscles, some muscles, to blow your head off. I, damn, Anthony. Yeah, uh, that is. Yeah, that's how much I hated that guy. That probably has to be the most violent rant I've made yet. So I, you know, I'm <clears throat> back to the original topic of that Master Chief bundle. Uh, you know, good for Microsoft for trying to stay competitive. Uh, you know, competition is better for everyone. You know, you know, Sega was stomping Nintendo's butts for a while, and they came back. Um, I you just, know, I just love it when a company has to work their butts off just to get back in the game. And, and realistically, that's kind of what or stay you know, in the game, I should say, I, like working their butts off. Because like, I like I've seen it happen before. Like when a company has to work its butt off or be knocked out of the ring, they freaking. Like, they get some, like, drastic, fast improvements going. And uh, going well. Yeah, I mean, Microsoft really has. Like, in the past, you know, 
Like, what? Because the thing is that when you need to, like, stop from getting knocked out of the ring, you can't do anything stupid or radical. Yeah. Kill it, uh, like, like, getting rid of the connect, Not radical. And, you know, okay, yeah. Alright, so, uh, next story is, speaking of Microsoft, uh, Windows 10. It doesn't matter if you paid for your copies of Windows 7 or Windows 8. Windows 10 is a free upgrade even for pirated versions. Wow. Look, they're, Holy they're, crap. Trying, they're trying to do what Apple did with their devices, except Windows works on anything that it has the spec sheet for it. And that is, let's saturate the market. Let's just fucking get on everything. And let's, you know, let's make all our shit free just so people are using our OS. Oh. That's a very interesting move. Because if there's I mean, any, because if, if there's any, like, anti-piracy team that, freaking like, Microsoft has an entire giant team of people dedicated to stopping piracy of Windows. And they're still really bad at their job. Because, dude, pirate, like, I mean, not, I don't pirate Windows. Look, here's what? the thing I've learned is that people who break um, all that freaking copy protection stuff, they're not idiots. It's like the no, people who, it's smart. like it's it, it's like the people who write viruses because you know I've had some people come up to me and say, "But I have antivirus software and firewalls. How come I still buy computers to get viruses?" And I'm like, "The people who write the stuff aren't stupid. They they're they like, know you have that. They like probably spend all day, every day, cracking this stuff around, cracking this stuff all the time. They're not stupid. People who write viruses and people who." You know, break through these who crack discs and all that kind of stuff. Not dumb at all. Yeah, man. Um, what else was I gonna say? Um, yeah, I. You know, this is cool. Good on them. Uh, I mean, here's know. the other cool thing too: is that I think if you upgrade up to ten and uh, and you want to go back to 7, I think you can still do that. Because it's a Windows 7 key. It's not like they're going to take that key and lock it to 10. So yeah, you I could try, you, like, like that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to, like, take my laptop, try out Windows 10, try out DirectX 12. And if I don't like it, I can go back to 8 or 7. Which I think they, is I'm a lazy. really good idea. It's I like, hey, wanna... guys, Windows 10 is going to be free to upgrade for its first year. So you're free to try it. You're free to... Now see if all your programs work on it, and if it doesn't, you can go back. The only inconvenience I see is how you go back because Anthony, you're, you're not, lagging. It, you're lagging. Oh, never mind. Oh, you're good. Am I good Keep now. Going. Okay. The problem I see with up yep. with, the, with this upgrade is that um, going back because if you upgrade to ten and then something's broken, like say mm, this one game you have doesn't work anymore. And you try and go back, that could it could mean having to wipe your entire hard drive and reinstalling everything. That's the only major convenience I see with having to go back if you don't like 10. But I think it's pretty awesome that they are like, yeah, guys, you can, you're free to try 10. Which tells me that they're pretty confident about it. And judging from the preview I've seen, oh, the start menu is coming back. Which I'll say the start screen in 8.1 isn't that bad, but it's okay. It takes a while getting used to. I mean, it looks cool. I might upgrade, but I'm not doing it. I'm not it doing it until it I It basically out. looks like Windows 7 and Windows 8.1 got mixed up together and came up with something more modern and awesome with the best of both worlds. But that's just me staring at the desktop. Oh, and it has voice search. You know all that, you know all that fancy bullshit about Siri and Google voice search? Yeah. Yeah, well, Cortana is your best friend on Windows now. God fucking damn it. Because they got to integrate Halo into your world, okay? Project Spartan is now going to murder just Internet stop. Explorer. Just stop. And Cortana will be your friend as she helps you search the Internet. Which make, doesn't make sense because didn't Cortana die in Halo 4? Yes. What's she doing in your copy of Windows? I don't, is, she being Halo, born in Windows maybe, 10? is she being maybe, born in Windows 10 so she can die in 200 years? Maybe Halo 5 explains that. Cortana right. is being born on your Windows phone and Windows 10 so she could die 200 years later. Uh, what's the next news story? Give me, give me something new. 
the new story south by southwest game year for 20 game of the year stuff for 2014 okay south by southwest. it's a pretty That's like... short category list actually all right so gamers voice award which i don't know what that is it goes to speedrunners hey can you can you can you link this in the chat uh yeah hey everyone we record on team speak if you didn't know there we go. Right, I want, I the want to... Matthew Crump Cultural Innovation Award goes to this War of Mine. All right. Most that game anticip- is awesome. No, th- all right, hold on. Let me tell everyone, this War of Mine is a fucking amazing indie game. If you have a PC and you want, like, an idea of, like, video games as art, check that shit out. All right, go ahead. Cool. Most anticipated crowdfunded game, Star Citizen. I think I read an article that said that they crowdfunded $75 million to make this. I have no idea what that is. Okay, what's next? It's something sci-fi, and yeah, I don't know what it is either. I need to look into it. Most valuable add-on content is The Last of Us Left Behind. I, if it weren't for several Blizzard expansions coming out, I would agree. Uh, most... You mean 2014? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this is stuff for 2014. Uh, most valuable online channels, Rooster Teeth. Okay. I think there's a typo there. I think they should have put the Gamer Access. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's, you know... Rooster Actually, Teeth is qualified. You remember that Microsoft debacle? I, pre- I think they clarified something out of it that made everything okay again. Uh, Rooster Teeth produces amazing content. Uh, Red vs. Blue is fantastic. Uh, Ruby's solid. I'm not actually particularly fond of a lot of their, like, gaming-specific stuff, like their Achievement Hunter and stuff, but, like, their machinimas are fucking great, and their gaming podcast is okay. Like, like when it comes to gaming podcasts, like, my preference is obviously the Giant Bombcast, and I also really like... Um, Kind of funny. The kind of funny games cast is really good. Cool. Yes, they they did steal our podcast name, but they didn't do it with a K, so they're safe. Bastards. <laughs> Most valuable esports team, Cloud Nine. So Cloud Nine is a uh, league. I'm guessing it, it's a league team. I actually, I think it was like 2013 when I actually was playing League and I was watching their championship series thingy. Uh, Cloud9, they kind of easily beat everyone else, actually. Okay. I think they lost only once and beat everything else because they were talking, they were like so objectively orientated. That's what I've noticed. And uh, <laughs> esports coverage, here's the thing I noticed about League esports coverage. The one word they get a little tired of hearing is composition. Team composition, 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 composition. Honestly, if they had used that word in football, I it's like the word opportunity in football. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to have this opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. Oh. It's like TV, 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 sports, sports, sports Call of Duty. It's like that. God damn Anyways. it. Most valuable character is Ellie from The Last of Us Left Behind, which I feel is a bit lame. That is really lame. It's like, if you pick the person that went with Ellie, I forgot her name. Okay. But Ellie? Really? I mean, last year was not a good new year for new characters. Like, I guess they said a... most valuable, so I'm guessing most useful. Like, I- I'm saying, like, best new character, and we gave it to show from Persona 4 Ultimax red and torben so i mean our best character list and then even when we did the nominees for that award i remember it was like really shallow like it was like fucking i don't know the characters in infamous were okay uh, like like wolf among us those aren't original they're all from fairy tales you know like oh well persona and these indie games they did pretty good and Lord of the Rings had this new thing, I guess. Like, last year wasn't a good year for new characters, but I... And that's a bullshit cop-out. All right, what's next? Um, excellence in conversions? I don't know okay, that so this is when you like a movie game or a TV game or, like, like Batman games. And, okay. yeah, and yeah I agree Park. with that. South Park was a really awesome game. It was on sale on PSN for $5. It was pretty funny day. when we watched it. Sorry, guys, we're all here trying to build a brand new Taco Bell. <laughs> that game is really funny. It is a really good RPG. My problem with it was just really short. 
Like well, Anthony, South Park. Anthony, if you can get that game for like twenty bucks or less, definitely check it out. I think you'd like it. Cool. Right. Uh, excellent. It's a multiplayer. Super Smash Brothers Wii U. They weren't specific about this, so I guess. I know we gave it best competitive multiplayer, so yeah. All right, sure. Um, Excellency Musical Score, Transistor. Hey, that was an award we actually gave to that we actually gave that exact same award, and yeah, Transistor's music is awesome. All right, next. Excellence in sound effects, Alien Isolation. Makes sense. Horror game. Yeah, that that makes that makes sense. <sighs> this next one, I don't know. Excellence in design and direction, Shadow of Mordor. I guess I don't know. Yeah. And this is what, I, I, I don't really know because done... I like I, I go through it and it's like I don't feel like their missions were like designed too particularly well because especially this one mission where you have to go around and kill every war chief, and I have a hard time doing that. And I effectively stopped playing the game because I screwed up a little bit and it punished and it gave me this such this huge challenge that I'm like, you know what, I'm not gonna do this anymore. Sorry. So. Yeah. So next. Excellent scenario of The Wolf Among Us. What did we give best story last year? I think ours might have been similar. Oh, let me check. Hold on, I have the list right here. We gave it to The Wolf Among Us, so they're right. <laughs> they're right. <laughs> it's like, if you agree with us, you're right, but if you don't, you're wrong. We're the internet, after all. Yes, we are the internet. You either agree with us, or you're all wrong. Uh, excellence in visual achievement, Far Cry 4. I would say yeah. That game was really pretty. I personally would have gave it to Infamous, but I could see where they were coming from. Uh, excellence in technical achievement, Destiny. Uh, mean, depends on where you look. Yeah. If, I if, guess. if you looked at if you looked at the visuals and the audio work, yeah. If you looked at the depth of mission design, it's like they only had three modes. But then you look which at is not like, a technical. <laughs> But then you look at the shooting and how good it controls, especially on a console. Like, I personally would have given that to other games, but yeah, I, I can see where they're coming from. Right, Excellence in animation, Shadow of Mordor. Eh. I don't... Okay. Sure. Excellence in art, Shot of Light. I believe we gave... I believe, it like... So, our two of our staff artists are very much, like, what you should check out their new show. It's fucking awesome. Um, but they insisted that's what we give the award to for best art. And, like, we were like, fuck it, sure. Because here's the thing. Like, they didn't, like... There weren't many awards where they wanted to go to bat fight for. But that was the one, and I was like, fuck it, sure. Let's go Maybe ahead. it's a game that appeals to really big artists like them, and because you and I are not... Cause, artists cause, like drawers yeah. drawing art that's probably why you and i are I, kind of like a little more disconnected from it i think that game looks really pretty though like no doubt that game is beautiful like honestly I played... though when it comes to art freaking this year at Ori in the black forest holy crap dude right <laughs> i freaking look at that game and i'm just like this has to be one of the most professionally made presentation works i've ever seen not gonna lie, it reminded me of Xenoblade, and Xenoblade has some of the best presentation ever. Didn't that matter game, to me that ran on a Wii. It was very good. You you should. I'm telling you right now, you would probably like Ori on the PC. It was. It's a real yeah, game. and it's an indie game, so it's inexpensive. Yeah, it's twenty bucks. Uh, anyway, Ooh, moving, moving forward. Excellence in gameplay, Shadow of Mordor. Should have been Bayonetta two. Whatever. Yeah, freaking. I'm just like gameplay. Shadow Mordor. Really? It's Assassin's I, Creed makes Batman, but I didn't think it was that good. I, good. John really, John gave it his game of the year, considering what one game of the year from us and them. Um. Yeah. Fucking. I would have much rather had Shadows of Mordor. I much rather rather had Shadows of Light. We'll get to that though. Go ahead. Uh, tabletop game of the year. Star Realms. Okay. I have no Mo idea what that is. Me either. <laughs> Mobile game of the year, Hearthstone. Fuck Journey yes. Warcraft. Absolutely. That you game. can play it on your phone, your In tablet, opinion, your laptop. That, like, I like after our game of the year awards, I went back and played more of that game, and I was like, yeah, I fucked up not campaigning for this super hard. 
Like that game could have easily won game of the year in my opinion. Anyway, what what's uh what's what's game of the year, Anthony? Tell me. <sighs> you're making me you're making this pretty hard for me, you know. Yeah, just read, read the fucking I name. Don't want to say it. Read the fucking name, Anthony. Dragon Age Inquisition. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Fuck that game. Oh. All right. All right. Here's so... the thing. I did an entire review for Dragon Age Inquisition because, well, I didn't have anything to do. It was freaking January. <laughs> there was nothing coming out. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to play this and see what the hype is about because Bremen likes it. John supported it. And given the choice between Bayonetta and Dragon Age, the girls went with Dragon Age also. So, so they were I'm with a, Smash Brothers, but like... Oh, okay. But, but given like, between Bayonetta and Dragon Age, they would go for Dragon Age. Yeah. So Which I'm like, is what okay, we were at, well, because like, n- none of the men wanted, in, a, in that conversation, for whatever reason, wanted to support Super Smash Brothers. So I was okay with Smash at 1, actually. I just wasn't okay with Because it was the Bayonetta. least hated on. I wasn't okay with Bayonetta being lower than 2... And even then, I wasn't totally okay with it being, like, number, uh... I wasn't completely okay with it being number fucking two, two but, like, if it was Smash, I would have lived with it. Yeah. Yeah, but, but anyways, so I freaking did an entire review of Dragon Age Inquisition, played through the game, like how I normally would play Dragon Age games, and then when I wrote the review, I'm like, okay, it is a safe, reliable acceptable, comfortable choice for Western RPG fans. But there aren't enough great, wow, incredible, man, I'm so happy I got this. All right, so moments. in my opinion, a Western RPG that uh, that is, like, game of the year worthy to me is, is, is something along the lines of Mass Effect 2. Or Oblivion, which is so unfair. I realize that. I realize how unbelievably unfair that is. But I tend to dislike that genre. But I can typically recognize when a game is still good, even though I dislike the genre. Like I, you know, dr- you know, fucking. Uh, I don't like the genre that much. But Jade Empire was a great game. I don't like the genre that much. But you know, the you know the first Dragon Age was a great game. And this game was a torrid pile of horse shit. Okay, from someone who doesn't like the genre, like, you know, I'm sure if I was like Anthony where I like the genre, I think I would just be like, eh, it's okay. But like, as someone who doesn't like the genre of Western RPGs, this game was a boring pile of horse shit. I, pl- I got four hours into it and said, fuck this. You know, it was the hinterlands, right? It was the hinterlands. The, it, it Everyone's like, direct. get out of the hinterlands and do stuff. I'm like, but, dude, they kind of sent about, you. I said, I said it about Final Fantasy 13 because it, it had this problem. Having to play a game for 15 hours before it gets good is not a fucking good game. Fuck you, people. You know, like if it, you know, if it's like, you know, like I'm willing to say that if it's like one or two hours, okay. That's fine. I get it. Some things have a slow start. You know, Twilight Princess, it takes you about two hours before it goes anywhere. You know, and I love that game. It's a great game. You know, like, I fucking love, um, you know, I love the first Pokemon, but it's about two hours before you fucking get anywhere. You know, but, like, I played this game for four fucking hours. And every, like, every minute of it, except the beginning, that intro section, was fucking torture. Ah! You know? Like, just... Oh, man. So, here's here's another thing I feel about Inquisition. For a person who actually is a bit of a sucker for these types of games, it's good i guess but there was nothing that stood out to me as special in any way like here's the thing dragon h1 played way worse gameplay wise dragon h1 was quite a ways worse but you know what it had a super huge redeeming factor and that is it basically established the world of thetis and the story is absolutely amazing it had a huge redeeming feature 
I wouldn't call it redeeming, but it had a huge highlight, I would say. Inquisition, I didn't feel anything. It's reliably good. It works. It's a safe choice, and you know, just about any fan of this, any fan of Dragon Age could roll along with it just fine. But I just looked at it as like gray pace. They just like, okay, did we get all the major check boxes to make people happy? All right, let's play it safe after Dragon Age 2. In fact, I even dare say that Dragon Age 2 had more personality than Inquisition. Dragon Age 2, I actually like the story in Dragon Age 2 a lot more than Inquisition because Inquisition, like, I, there's like this problem with bravado at the beginning. They try to play up that you're this special person who came out of the Fade and did this and all of a sudden you're no longer a prisoner. And honestly, in my opinion, in real life, people don't do that. If they suspect that you freaking blew up the entire Conclave to pieces, they wouldn't free you even if the best mate said, no, that guy's fine. Seriously, he'll be a hero. See, he can close the breach. Now let him go. He'll be cool. See, I mean, you're here now. Oh, man. Like, I'm just sitting here like, stop the bravado. I'm not feeling it because you're supposed to build up the fact. You're supposed to build a resume up to being a hero instead of like being shoved out there thinking everyone you're a hero already when you really didn't do anything yet. Music wasn't very interesting as far as I could tell. You, you don't pay any attention to the soundtrack at all. The only two tracks, the only tracks you can really hear are the stuff that says Sky Holder in the name and that sing together thing they have in the mountains before you find Sky Holder. And... Uh, what else could I ever vent about? Story! Kinda... They tried to make it cool, but let's be honest here, this is new Bioware where their games play pretty I, good, but I they don't have interesting stories anymore. I felt no connection to this story or characters from the beginning. Yeah, this is I, not like Mass Effect 2 and Dragon Age 1. Yeah, this is not like, the like, golden age of their writing. Like, in in Mass Effect Two, in the first like hour, when they show you the Normandy, the new Normandy, and you're like, "Oh shit," you know, like, you know, like, "Wow, that was a wow moment." And it had music to go with it too, right? Yeah, like that was like, "Whoa!" It was like, "Holy shit, that's the new Normandy." Yeah, like, Dude. oh my god, I'm just. Thank you, I'm... Cerberus. I'll take your ship now. Yeah, um, um, and then they wrecked it in Mass Effect 3 by sterilizing it with lots of red lighting again. <sighs> but yeah, that was pretty awesome. Uh, but uh, what else? Did, yeah, but it's just like writing talent isn't really there. And this always bugs me whenever people say this. They say, oh man, Dragon Age is such a great game. I spent 140 hours on it. There's so much to do. So much to do. So much to do. And I sit there and I say, guys... There may be a lot to do, but if I don't feel like my side quests are worth anything, I don't care. I Man. don't care that I don't care that I can spend thirty hours in the hinterlands. I'm just going around I, I, killing I'm... this wolf and that wolf, and what do I get in return? Oh, a little bit of money. Yes, I understand they have to go out and do side quests to get, you know, items and whatever to craft stuff, but I don't feel like the side quests are that fun and I don't feel like they're worth enough. To justify me going out there and spending 30 hours riding back and forth between this giant plane that I really don't want to deal with. Like, in Mass Effect 3, there was a reason why you wanted to do side quests. It's because it rated, raised up your galactic readiness meter. Whether your army is going to survive or not is going to depend on that meter. So that was a big deal. In Oblivion... Side quests? Yeah, they were small side quests, but freaking, they were literally entire plot lines where you could, like, freaking go out and be, like, King of the Thieves Guild. Or the Mages Guild. That was pretty awesome. Uh, but, I don't know. We've went on about this rant before, but honestly, my opinion, Dragon Age Inquisition, overrated. It's good. I understand <sighs> that it is an acceptable game, but it's overrated. I would rather play Skyrim. I would... Uh, I prefer Dragon Age 2 more. Uh, oh, so... I had a discussion about this on Bronze and Rants recently. Your game could be 40 hours long, but if it's 40 hours of horse shit... Oh, my God. But, like... Just no. Just no. Like, I would, ra I would rather play, like... You know, if you give me fucking 40 hours of Dragon Age Inquisition 
versus 90 minutes of journey i'll take 90 minutes of journey every i'll fucking take journey time. also because at least journey when i'm done it puts a huge smile on my face i'd be like dude that was that was awesome you know, and, and and I get so mad at this because, like, I compare it to the game that lost for us, which was Bayonetta 2. And ba- rarely is it that the entire time I play a game, I'm not bored. You know, like, sometimes, just, like, even the best games, like, I'm just like, eh, t- tune out a little bit. The entire eight hours of Bayonetta's campaign, I was enthralled. Dude, and it's having just, a it, blast. It's just... The action kept going, and the sequences just... They kept getting fucking crazier. Like, just... I'm not joking. For me, the big, like, the, one of the biggest wow moments is when you're fighting, like, the Flying Serpent or whatever, and you go up to the Gates of Paradise, and I just sat there, and I'm just like, whoa. Also... And here's the thing, too. The game was huge fun for me, even though I was playing it on the easiest difficulty setting. It was fun even on easy. Like on normal, and and here's the thing on normal, it it it's it's fucking amazingly good because like if you're into that kind of game and you're into dodging and countering and doing combos, like there's tons of combos, tons of weapons to unlock. It's a deep game with tons of reasons to replay it. And dude, I, I like the bow. The, dude, you can get chainsaws on your feet and guns in your hands. Whoa. <laughs> experimentation and, and oh, that game is so good and yeah. you know I, I, if I would have reviewed that game I would have gave it a 9.5 you know uh, there, like if the story was a little better uh, and like if the story didn't require so much knowledge about the first game uh, I probably would have given it a 10 it is the best character action game I've ever played Better than God of War, better than Metal Gear Rising, better than the Wonderful 101, as much as I love the Wonderful 101 so far. You know, it is the best character action game I've ever played. And to for it to, like, if it would have lost to any other game on this list, I would have been unhappy, but I wouldn't have been just super pissed like I am now. You know? Yeah. Like, like, if you want to pull the card that Dark Souls is better than fucking Bayonetta, like, I think you're wrong, but I understand. <laughs> I don't understand how this, how this fucking game is getting... I don't get either. Like, I say it, like I said, it's like, I, in games, I usually look for the big selling point. And for some people, it's gameplay. For some, it's game length. But to me, I couldn't find it in Dragon Age. And everyone's like... Game length. Well, here's the thing. Length is good if I feel like it is worthwhile. I mean, Wait, and, like, here's, and here's the other thing. Like, Bronson, like... Bronson, right? Bronson, you did a, an episode on game length. Here's the thing. Like, Obviously, when I was younger, I didn't get games very often. And even now, I'm trying not to buy games often. So I spend, you know, try to spend little this on is, games. This, like, is, this is why I tell you now that you have a job, a Gamefly account is going to be your best friend. Yeah, it's gonna be my best friend. But here's, but even then, like, if I'm being frugal, Final Fantasy fourteen. Why? Because I play that game like a hundred hours a month or something. It's only fifteen yeah. dollars a month. Good yeah, value, like, and I love, and I really like playing Final Fantasy fourteen. Yeah, like, so that's even same, better. Same thing with me and WoW. Like, I pay, I pay for WoW, and like right now, I'm currently on the current tier of rating Blackrock Foundry, and and I'm working on the Legendary Quest, and I'm having a great time. Or like. Even, like, when I was a kid, there were games that could last forever and were super fun. You know, like, I play, you know, like, I played fucking Gran Turismo into the fucking ground. I played Grand Theft Auto, and all I did was drive and run from the police. I mean, I mean, yeah. Like, and I, I did that, like, 30 minutes a day almost every day for two years before I finally got bored. I mean, I beat Grand Theft Auto 3. Right, and then like yeah. I have played it for like two years straight of nothing but just murdering people in the streets. Cheat well, codes. yeah. Well, I'm playing GTA Five, and all I'm doing right now is just driving a car recklessly. That's all I'm doing. Yeah, and that's and, yeah. So there you go. And they're like yeah. super short games. Like okay, well, to me, Bayonetta would probably qualify as a super short game. But then there's like Bayonetta. I'm just like I'm so happy I bought this. 
I mean, yeah, even if like, even if it's just Bayonetta two on its own, I'd be like, you know what? I this has to be Bayonetta two like, was probably the only game that came out in twenty fourteen that I played in twenty fourteen that put a huge smile on my face. All the other games, I was like, oh yeah, this is respectable, no, but Bayonetta's yeah. the one that just made me go, made me have a grin on my face. And you that, know that, what? I kind of missed that. That game, like. I was hyped for that game since 2013. Like, 2013, they showed the trailer, and I decided I'm going to go buy the original and check it out again. And I beat it, and I loved it. I loved every last bit of the original Bayonetta. You know, uh, I thought it was really difficult at points and had some issues, but it was a lot of fun. And then, like, I put it as my most anticipated game of the year, and then I played at E3 and put it as my best game of E3. And then I play the demo, and I'm like, "Fucking this demo was amazing." And then I play the game, and it it lived. It was one of those rare games that lives up to every bit of expectation and hype I built for it. So, and that is so unbelievably rare. Um. So yeah, I you know, um, yeah, like it, you know, if people, you know, if we were doing that top ten list again, and like. Everyone was like, Hearthstone should be game of the year. I would have been like, sure. Yeah, I understand. I'll I'll, I'll cave. It's four to one. You know, if, if they were like Smash, if they were like fucking Dart, if they would have said any other game on that list besides like maybe Child of Light, and even if Child of Light, if it was like four to one, I would have been like, fine, fine, fine. I get it. But like Dragon Age, like I like I trusted John and Bremen, and I was like, alright guys, you you are you are arguing in favor of this. Uh, and you apparently really believe in it, so I, I'm going to trust you. And, man, that was a bad decision. I was uh, a little so, concerned because, like, Bronson, this is a Western RPG. You know your, your chances are very high you're not going to like it. Well, the, which turned out to be the case, but worse. Yeah, like, it was a thousand times because worse. Because normally you would be like, I don't like it, but I get it. This is a case of... Uh, yeah. Case of what? Hello? Uh, I lost my train of thought. Okay, well, it yeah, was like normally, I, yeah, this, like normally you were like, oh, I don't like it, but I can understand it, like Skyrim. But then this is like a case of, uh, it's actually worse. You, you didn't like it the whole time. Yeah, like this is like Fallout again. But unlike Fallout, I'm not willing to spend 20 hours to try and understand it. Like, I spent four hours, and I'm like, no, I'm fucking done. <laughs> it's like this. everyone's like, you need to spend 140 hours to understand. I'm like, sorry, I'm going to go play my MMO now. Yeah, like, sorry, I'm going to go, like, I'm sorry. There are a bunch of, like, Bloodborne's out in a week. No. Um, yeah, like, like, I was willing to spend the time to understand Dark Souls, and I get Dark Souls and Demon Souls. Like, I understand why you would like those games. Uh, like they're not my preference, but yeah. No, uh, like, uh man, I, I'm, I'm super just, ugh, about this. All right, moving on. What's the next news story? Next news story. Well, Nintendo probably could have sold more 3DSs last month, but they managed to sell 395,000 anyways. Which is more than anyone else for the for month consoles. of February. Yeah. New 3DS. Yeah, so good job, ladies and gentlemen, for buying all that Nintendo products. All the Nintendo. So Please make more Amiibos. You have more money. Yeah, apparently they're doing a second run of Falcon, little like all the rare ones in Japan. So Japan. Import yep. time. Yep. Uh, Anthony, I think we should order them in bulk because it's cheaper that way on shipping. Order so, them in bulk and then sell them at exorbitantly high prices. You know what I'm thinking. Yeah. So uh, you hate scalpers, but you're willing to play their game. I just, look, man. I'm I'm like uh, this is like that thing where you are just so tired of it that you're like, and I'm not even gonna sell them at exorbitant prices. Like I'm like I say we buy as many as we can and do like a two dollar markup to cover our shipping costs. So. Okay. But like, it's like those people who buy the PAX tickets and then sell them for like only ten dollars more. You know, like if scalpers were doing that, I wouldn't be as mad. I'd be like, ah, eh, okay, you're making a little profit. I understand. But like little Mac, 
which these amiibos are fucking Happy Meal toys. Like, I bought you one for your birthday, you know, and I know you've bought others, and I've been to the store to buy some myself. And hold on. Let's find out how much a Little Mac amiibo is right now, because he's one of the rare ones. Seventy fucking dollars. Seventy dollars is the cheapest one. The fuck? Yeah. Like, dude. Villager, seventy dollars. So, Meta Knight, forty dollars. We Fit Trainer, actually surprisingly cheap at thirty-two. Earth, fifty-two dollars. Rosalina, thirty-six dollars. Shulk, thirty dollars. These are all off Amazon, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, Mega Man, twenty bucks. Captain Falcon, fifty bucks. Pit, seventy dollars. Also, if you want a limited edition uh, version of Majora's Mask, the game, not the console, that'll run you a hundred dollars. Okay. The shit is insane. Wow. Oh, I actually just found a villager amiibo for $85. This is this is fucking madness. You know, yeah, like here's the thing. If it was like $20, like a $7 markup, I'd be a little upset, but I'd be like, eh, okay, whatever. I'll pay it. But like this is like a 30% markup in some of these cases. Or not 30%, a 300% <sighs> markup. Supply and demand. I know. Look, I mean, the thirty percent market means if people are paying ninety dollars, freaking, I met a person who paid three or four times the price of what you would normally pay at a store for one of those GameCube Wii U adapters. He paid sixty dollars for one, and he was okay <sighs> with paying sixty dollars for one. How how much are people, those right so, now? I'm checking. Sorry, go ahead. Nintendo's not know, gonna. Nintendo's not gonna put out more until May. I heard. Yeah, that's and you and they're all pre-ordered out at GameStop, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, they're fifty-two dollars. But if you're one, if you're willing to get one of the ones from May Flash, which are rocking a five-star rating right now, it's twenty-one dollars. Fuck you, Nintendo. You're not getting my money. May Flash is. So, so done. Um. Uh, Anyway, so yeah. Uh, anyway, what's the next news story? Or what was the next news story? And it's the last one I have is um, when you guys are hearing this this weekend, multiplayer on PSN free. Cool for the weekend. So hey, this weekend, uh, John and I, and hopefully Bremen, we're doing Grand Theft Auto Online, and we're going <clears> to <throat> try and do heists. And <clears throat> if you guys want to join in, and we have room, okay. Cool. Man, you forgot someone who might be joining you. Yeah. Assuming I'm... the game gets there and you actually unlock it. Yeah, if it gets here in time, I unlock the thing and I don't have work. There's a lot of ifs in that sentence, I realize. <laughs> it's like, the more ifs you put in, the lower your chances, you know? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to have work, because I've already worked 30 hours this week and I still have two days to go, and the day this place pays me for overtime when it's not election season is the day hell freezes over. Um, that's they're cheap. They won't even pay for a new microwave. I know. Upset in. I'm aware. I had, I had this, I had this discussion with you, like about the microwave thing, and I was so upset. I was just, I, I don't, I never thought in my life I'd be this mad about a microwave. So, yep. Things broken. Burnt my popcorn today. Fucking damn it. Um, all right, moving forward. Um, god damn. Oh, man. All right, so, uh, did you talk about Uncharted getting delayed last week? Yeah, I did. Okay. I, it I wanted, is I, a big bummer, but hey, they want to make a great game. So, okay. I'm okay with I'm cool yeah, with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm A-okay with that. Actually, There's you know what? Great is not even a good enough word to describe Naughty, Naughty Dog's games these days. Yeah, like... Like Exceptionally said, superb games. There we go. Like, you look I'm at The Last of Us, again. Uncharted 2 and 3, and then, like, you know, The Last of Us Remastered, and, like, it's them and Nintendo, and then, like, everyone else. 
Yep. Well, like, <laughs> it's like the Platinum Games is on its way up there slowly. Like if if Platinum Games gets another wonderful one on one style game, Metal Gear Rising or Bayonetta, I'll say sure. So. So yeah. Uh, um, like, freaking <laughs> every time I think. There's these guys, and then there's everyone else. I always keep thinking of, like, freaking, like, um, what was it? The 2013 season uh, on points per game in the NFL. There was the Denver Broncos, and then there was everyone else. That's how big the gap was. Chicago led everyone else, but it was still Denver and everyone else. Denver yeah. was, like, 45, and Chicago was, like, 38 or something. Yeah, man. Well, that's what happens when you have the most points scored in a season. Uh, anyway, we got, uh, so, yeah, that, you know, good on them. I'm glad they're doing that. I'm glad, you know, I'm glad that we're not going to get a glitchy, shitty Uncharted. I hope that game's awesome. So, we got questions, then we got story time, and then, and then we have announcements, and we'll, we're calling it a neat thing. And I checked, and I checked the, my, uh, my work during this, and still no start time. Which makes me think it's later, which makes me very happy. Anyway, uh, so Jaceway says the Shield TV looks promising as it's being powered by NVIDIA Grid, which means they can keep upping the quality of games on Grid without changing the hardware of the Shield. Maybe it'll hit 4K before the new consoles come out and support 4K. So here's the thing. That's awesome, but you still have to be connected to the internet. I can't get a consistent internet on my drive, for, or you know, my bus ride from my house to my work. No, you can not... use the Shield TV device. The Android console? Yeah, I know, but that thing, to, like, if you're going to be streaming games off your PC using Grid, that you still have to use the internet. Like, do you yeah, know? Yeah, that's didn't a lot of, with... that's a lot of bandwidth right there you're going to need. We did, we, in fact, we did an interview with them about Grid. I'm not sure if it ever went on the website, but we did. Um, so yeah, like, I don't, that is so unlikely. Like, I'm sorry, but portable devices with portable games have to have some level of built-in hardware because wireless internet just is not reliable in most places. You know, like uh, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm very lucky. Like, I get I get good signal in most the vast majority of where I go on AT and T. That's not the case in the majority of America. Um. As far as the Shield TV device, you know, the Android console thing that plugs into the TV. Oh, that thing? The, yeah, the, I think he means 4K gaming on that before the oh. gaming consoles get it, and via oh, NVIDIA the Shield. Shield. TV. Oh, yeah, okay, the Shield sorry. TV. I got Shield and Shield TV mixed up, my bad. Yeah, the Shield TV running 4K. Uh, maybe? Um... What? I don't know. You're gonna have to like convince people about that because I imagine you obviously have to pay like some subscription to get 4K, and then you have to have a TV that supports 4K. Is it cheaper than building a two thousand dollar system or twenty five hundred dollar system? I should say. I mean, even that Nick can't run 4K right now. Uh, I, you know, I they actually so the Titan X just it, the benchmarks and stuff for it just came out, and uh, it's better than the 980. Uh, by, 30, by, 30, by 30 percent <laughs> uh yeah um it's a lot I, i'm about to i'm gonna try and find the benchmarks give me a sec i was fucking reading this earlier today where was it it's like a 1440p graphics card but it's not a full 4k or something there we go i found it all right so uh it has way more cuda cores than the 980 lower clock speeds overall way more memory Three times as much. Uh, way, uh, way more memory bandwidth. Way more memory interface. And it uses about 100 more watts of power. <clears throat> and it's huge. This thing is fucking huge. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, which makes sense. Um, so they tried... Uh, so they ran some games at 440p and at 4K. So 2500 by 4 whatever and 4k titan x uh on ultra settings on 440 these are all the 440 benchmarks on ultra uh far cry 4 85 frames crisis 3 60 frames tomb raider ultimate edition 87 frames bioshock infinite 130 frames oh is this what this is 4k resolution no this is 440p 
So twenty five hundred by four forty. Oh, okay. Yeah, no fourteen forty. You mean? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, four by four forty. The resolution is really fucked up. <laughs> uh, and Metro Last Light is a six. Now these are the four K frame rates, and actually this is still pretty fucking crazy. The Heaven benchmark uh, was thirty two frames. Far Cry Four forty six. Far Crisis Three twenty eight. Tomb Raider fifty two. Bioshock Infinite seventy four. Battlefield Four sixty one. And Metro Last Light forty. To put that in comparison, the 980 on those same games in the same order, 23, 38, 22, 39, 55, 46, 32. So uh, depending on the game, it gives you anywhere from a 10 to 30 frame difference in 4K. Okay. So I want to see one Titan compared to two 980s in SLI, because, I mean, that's basically the same price at that point. So, yeah. So that thing, you know, it's a, it's a fucking damn impressive piece of hardware. Cost. Thousand bucks. I remember the, uh, I think it was the original Titan. Freaking when the uh, 7, was the 780? I think it was the 780, yeah. When the 780 came out, it was, it was, uh, it was, Four fifths of what was it like four fifths of Titan at two thirds the cost, which made Titan completely irrelevant at that point, in my opinion, because it's like holy crap, would you want to pay that much more for like a ten percent bump? Yeah. But yeah, here in this case, it's like okay, twenty, ten, thirty percent improvement. Okay, I'm sorry, ten, thirty frame improvement. Okay, ten maybe. to thirty frames. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. I want to see the call, like the comparison of two nine eighties versus one Titan X. Um, because I mean, then I think possible. the two 980s run better. Because we'll you gotta remember the not you gotta remember the Titan X is a single GPU solution. Yeah. So to make a single GPU go flat out. Yeah. yeah. Um, as far as it's still, I mean, it's still really impressive. If I had, if I was building a twenty five hundred dollar machine instead of a fifteen hundred dollar one, I do. I throw it in whatever the. You know, equivalent will be in 2016. So. As far as uh, the NVIDIA Shield 4K, maybe. But the other thing, too, is that when I read that NVIDIA TV thing, it's like, yeah, you have grid, but what games are you going to have on grid? Because I remember that press release, they were saying stuff like, we've got games such as Half Life 2, Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. God damn and, I'm, it. and I'm sitting here and I looked at that damn list and I'm just like, uh, the fuck? Yeah. Not joking. This is the same press release that said that has that, you know, Shield Android TV has 256 cores. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, the marketing bullshit meter is really high right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. I don't know, man. It's th- this. I like. My thing is internet speeds. Like I, we have very good internet where we live for very good prices, and even then, like streaming a game at 1080p, there is still some latency. Like not much, depending on the game and such. Like, but like games that require precision and are fast. Like I did Sonic Generations. Like even hooked wired, I still have some problems every now and then. Yeah. So I don't know, man. This is streaming's neat, but what games are you gonna get on it? What uh, you know, there's there's all kinds of shit on there that you need to think of. Yeah, but 4K right. before the consoles, yeah, it could be an alternative. But again, yeah. it depends also, on the games. People need to fucking calm down about 4K. So 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 let, let me let me tell you about 4K for a sec. If you are on a screen that is smaller than, I'd say, 40 inches, you are going to get very minimal benefit from 4K. But color! That, that is going to be a big advantage, is color. But that is the biggest one. So if you are fucking losing your shit and you are not on a 42-inch or higher television, like, calm the fuck down. Dude, I have, like, freaking... My household has, like, this, um... 
five-year-old Sony Bravia. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's only a 1080p TV, and it's OLED. Like, today, that technology is everywhere on regular TVs. But back in the day, that was actually kind of higher end. That was a high-end feature, yeah. Yeah, that was a high-end feature to have OLED. It was kind of expensive. Today, it's pretty common. Back then, not so much. And... Heck, to this day, that TV still pumps out some amazing, good-looking television as far as no, picture like, quality, as far as, you know, responses. Like, the only thing that really feels outdated about it is the whole freaking smart TV software. That part feels old as hell. But other than that, it's still a modern television. Like, same thing with that uh, TV I have in the living room. Not my TV. My TV is not modern at all. But, like, the TV in the living room... Like, that thing feels like a new TV. You know? Like, it's 1080p, 240 hertz, OLED. Like, the thing is fucking great. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I, like, it's starting to get to the point where the differences for the average consumer are small. I just uh, kind of find it a little funny that they're trying to do take the smartphone approach with televisions and trying to come up with new things. Like, like to get uh, you to buy yearly. Yeah, yeah like, they try to get you to buy yearly. They're trying to innovate as hard as they freaking could. Because let's be honest here, like HD, that was huge. That was that was a colossal jump. And then they tried yeah, 3D TVs, which... That, which, uh, oh yeah, that thing in the living room does 3D. I forgot about that. Yeah, the thing is that a lot of 4K TVs have 3D TV functionality built in as standard. They, well, just, yeah, don't, they, they, just, they, they just don't hype up 3D like they used to. So, well, yeah, for obvious like, reasons? Well, because here's the thing. All these TV manufacturers had a huge boom after like, when things went HD, and then it died down. You know? and yeah. Then, now, and now they want those profits again. But motherfuckers, you're not going to get them. You know? And me, personally, I'm like my next TV, I have it picked out. It, it's, it's a, it is a Vizio in the E-series, which you're thinking, oh, that's their lowest, like... So I finally got to see the Vizios in person at my friend's house. He ha he has one from their lowest end series, and we played Xbox One on it. You know, we played Halo and we played Call of Duty, and it was fine. It was it, no latency, no real issue. Looked great, and right now Vizios E series for a fifty five inch is six hundred dollars, and for a fifty inch it is five hundred dollars. You no, know, and if you're willing to go, you know, like yeah, like your basic television is actually pretty good. Good, man. They want to like shove features down your throat. Like they try to come with a big thing. Like they tried 3D TV, and well, that didn't really take off. I guess they did sort of okay, considering how much money they were dumping into selling it. And then they tried curved TVs. They're still trying. They're, They're still, still trying. trying. It shows up sitting... at CES every year. It's stupid. I just look at the curved TVs, and I'm like. I literally asked the dude, the sales dude, so what's the point of this? Oh, it's for parties, because you know how you look from the side and you have like a flight image you can't see? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, well, the curved screen you can see from the side, so it's for parties. I'm like, what's wrong with walking, I don't know, two feet? What's, it, like, for me, a curved TV is completely useless. Like, like even when I move, that's useless, because I'm going to be moving into an apartment. And, like, I'm not going to have a super huge living room. Like, you, rem you remember my townhouse. Yeah. Uh, like, that living room wasn't huge. Like, you could see the TV from, like, 90% of angles. You know, like, that, you know, that, like, that wasn't, like, we, you know, we had a bunch of people in that living room when Aaron came out from Baltimore. And we, wa and we went downstairs because it was way too hot upstairs where my TV was when so we watched on a 40-inch Sony that my mom was renting at the time. And, you know, just we all saw it fine in a living room where we're all sitting in different places. Like, like a curved TV seems like for such a specific consumer. Like it they... seems more like it's for that type of consumer that would buy an LG Flex. You know, that curved, yeah. bendable uh, smartphone that bends it, only slightly. It seems like a person who lives in a really fucking huge house like it even sounds like the kind of person who is very into fashion like but like very I into can. fashion very into tech and has a lot of money and throws a lot of parties yeah uh, like, how many people do you know who are like that 
Because I don't know anybody who's like that. Most people I know hate other people. So, <laughs> you know, like... Uh, so parties and no parties, then? No part Like, and, you know, I, I want to point this out. If you are that person, like, you would probably do something like at Tori's old house. You know, when she lived with her, you know, at home. Where you have a projector. You know... Like, that that makes more sense to me. Because, you know, you just use a wall. And you make it bigger than any TV can be. And then you spend anyway. a few hundred dollars on a projector. Yeah. That I mean, actually dude, works you... with Smash. Yeah. That was fun. That was a fun night. Um, it was. Yeah. Rock Band worked great on it. Rock Band worked great the previous party before that one. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man, I'm... Yeah, but, like, I, I, you know, like, 55-inch, uh, you know, 55-inch TV for basically 600 bucks, smart TV, too. Like, I, you know, and it was of good quality. Like, I'm not, like, you know, I don't see the need to go to 4K yet. Especially if you are on I'd a screen. I'd say give it, like, another four, six years, I guess. Yeah, like this this is like when you like got to see a game in 720p on the original Xbox and you're like, "Oh." And it was really novel and neat. But like even we had one of the early HD TVs and we were like, I mean, early early. Like we got that thing in 03. Was it LCD or plasma? It was uh I think it was DLP. It was a DLP set. Oh. Um, so it's it was a projecting a, thing. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was. Yeah, it isn't projection like mine. Mine's like digital projection. This was like projection, projection. Like it has a fuck, <laughs> like it has a fucking lens that can break and shit, and it broke. Um, many years later, but it broke. Um. So am I? Yeah, it actually broke. Uh, it, I think it broke last year. So it lasted eleven years before it finally took a crap. Um. Which isn't bad. And it was this 65 inch 1080p TV in 2003. And my dad paid like, like some just asinine amount of money for it. I want to say like five, six thousand. Yeah. But, you know, he was ma- you know, he was making good money at the time. My dad's philosophy was like, well, fucking spend it while you got it. You don't, you don't take it with you. And fucking hey, he proved that right. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, I don't know, but, but yeah, like, like, got to see HD really early on in HD's life on that thing, and it was really novel and cool, especially when I got my 360, um, but, like, like, even then, I felt like, yeah, this is kind of ridiculous, and very, you know, like, I don't feel like HD was, like, fully worth the investment until, like, 2008, unless you were playing games. And even then, it was only really worth it on a smaller set. Like, I, I really don't think it was worth investing in a big-ass HD TV until, like, 2008, 2009. And even that was early, in my opinion. Like, if you buy one now, you're fine, obviously. Okay. Anyway, we got another question. Yes. Project, Project Cars better not be another Drive Club fiasco from Elitist. From a what? It, he he's for, his name is sorry his, the comments from elitist his name is oh, okay and then the drive club fiasco um yeah i hope that's the case i mean i think the benefit with project cars is that in the case of drive club it was made by a studio owned by sony and it was hyped up a lot by sony so you think ooh, this is gonna be the first big huge game for sony and then well, the game the first had big, a huge game for sony was infamous sorry yeah, first big racing game for the PS4. Didn't think my sentences. I'm slowly burning out here. <laughs> From sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation, sorry. But uh, it's the first significant driving game on the PS4. Because Grand Turismo isn't going to come out for like another year or two at that point. So it comes out and the online does not work for like a month. And it's freaking drive club. You need the online because if you're going to one up somebody or if you're going to send off challenges and go online and challenge each and have your club challenge another dude's club, you kind of need the internet. You need the internet for that. And you didn't. 
because it right. broke like three or four hours before it launched on the West Coast, which was unbelievable. So, right. in the case of Project Cars, I don't think it's going to be as big a fiasco as if there is one. Because, one, it's, it's a not... Pl- player. It, it's single player. Well, it, I'm pretty sure there's a multiplayer. In it I mean, too. yeah, but like it's primarily single player, like great. But it's not. It doesn't. Ha- it's not like a social racing game like Drive Club. In addition, it is not made by a studio that's owned by Sony, so it's not like there is as much hype as Drive Club. So if they screw up, they're not going to have as huge of a bomb as the as the Evolution Studio guys. Yeah. So, is there? Could there be fiasco? Maybe. But Drive Club kind of revolved over the it kind of revolved around the fact that you had an internet connection. That's how it works. That's I mean, it's a social racing game. Project Cars sounds more traditional. So yeah, yeah. Um, and it's right. like the third or fourth time they delayed it. And that's how it's going to come out in May. You know, Aaron and I talked about this a little bit on um, on. Uh, the game cast this week which is an awesome this is like the best game cast in a long time you should go listen to it this week um you know i like and uh we talked about how we we really need another 2007 you know because like you you know you look at 2007 and like that year as a whole like we got bioshock we got mass effect mario galaxy halo 3 the orange box project gotham 4 uh like that year was just nuts. Oh, you know, and we yeah, you know, we got cracked down, which okay, that's a little weird, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, you know, but but like we got a lot of big name great titles that year. You know, the first Uncharted, Ratchet and Clank, Heavenly Sword, you know, Unreal Tournament 3, the first rock band. A- and we haven't had a, you know, we haven't had a year like that since I would say like I'd say like 2011 was the last year like that. You know, 2013 was really good. 2012 was weird, and 2014 was like I I call it the year of delays because like Metal Gear delayed, Batman delayed, The Order even though it sucked delayed. You know, like uh, what else was delayed from last year? You know. But just tons of shit last year got delayed into this year. And I'm hoping this year pans out to be as awesome as we hope. Hmm. Yeah. Like I mean, Metal, Gear, Metal Gear is going to happen, but Uncharted 4 is not happening. But Halo 5 is happening. And Tomb Raider is happening. Halo 5 has to happen because Halo is like one of those, we got to put out a Halo every year kind of thing now. Almost. Well, almost. Not, not every almost. year, but close. Like every, but like they had to put out the collection year. last year, so they're gonna like remaster three next year or something. No, they're they're remastering ODST this year. Uh, or yeah, not remastering. Getting close. There's like, always gonna be a Forza coming out. There's always like gonna Forza, be an Assassin's Creed and Call of Duty coming out. Like, yeah, I don't care about those. But Forza, Mass Effect I, is probably next year. Mass Effect's definitely next year. Fallout yeah. this year. Fallout. Fallout. I guarantee Fallout's happening this year. And I guarantee you, I won't care. <laughs> that was so fucking brutal, Anthony. I really don't care about uh, Fallout. I don't. Oh, I don't. I didn't get it. I tried. Okay, I tried. And it's not like with you where I forced myself to the end and watched it. Okay, I tried because I really, 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 really liked Oblivion. <laughs> really liked it. To this day, I, I like I, to this day I'm like people sold that game to me. They're like, you like Oblivion, right? We'll check this out. And yes, I was so it's fucking like, disappointed. Yeah, it's like, you like I like Oblivion, right? Well, it's the same studio, and I'm like, okay, well, I really liked Oblivion. I'm going to try out Fallout, because, you know, freaking Game of the Year everywhere and all this kind of stuff, and, you know, Vault Boy. Got it. So, I played it, and I just couldn't, I just didn't get it. Like, that was probably, like, what Dragon Age Inquisition was to you, that's what Fallout 3 was to me. I didn't get it from the beginning of that game. I didn't get it an hour later. And I didn't get it when I blew all my legs out and had to use some stem packs that were next to useless. I didn't I, get it. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I uh, man, I... So I just don't but, care but, about but, Fallout. Uh, I, I will give another Fallout a chance. You know, you let a, y'all let a game surprise you, especially in this line of work, right? 
And yes, yeah. You know, you gotta let games surprise you, or you're never gonna be happy. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna try it. Um, and that is the, regardless of what we think. That is a big game, you know, for the year. And you know, I don't, you know, I don't, you know, I'm I'm going to play it. Like, and hopefully it's good, and it's a big game for the year. Um, we're obviously not getting another Bioshock for a while. I actually remember how someone sold Bioshock to me. Like, they said, yeah, it's this shooter with all this, like, you know, like, like they were really pitching it, and they're like, and you can shoot fire and lightning and bees. I'm like, fucking bees? What? And you can shoot fucking bees at people. Uh, you want to know what was another thing that was weird about the first Bioshock? You, 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 you get down into that underwater city rapture, right? Yeah. Which the first Bioshock has one of the best openings to a game of all time. Just ever. Like, regardless of what you think about that game. Is a man worth the sweat of his brow? Yeah, that whole speech. Like, if you wanted a speech to pitch being a libertarian to someone, that would be it. Yeah. And, um, God, what was I saying? And, like, you you find the first plasmid, and no one says anything to you to like what it is or how to use it. You just pick this up and stick it in yourself. And I am thinking that the main character of this game had to have been a heroin addict or a drug addict, because why else would he just randomly stick that in himself? No clue. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we got some announcements to make. Yes. Uh, first one being, we got a panel. We got a panel, and it's happening. You're like, where? Where can I see you? Well, we are going to be at Otaku Palooza at the University of Nevada, Reno. It is Reno's mini anime convention on Saturday, March 28th. Our panel starts at noon and ends at 2 p.m., but we'll be hanging out to sign shit and talk to people. Our panel's going to be rad. We're going to be doing, we're doing giveaways again courtesy of our new partner moondog so if you come and win a prize you can get 50 dollars off one of the badass computers that uh we're helping make uh you know and uh yeah so that's it's rad. In the student union building it is Top in the floor. david it's in the david math and science center oh whoops that is not the student union building that is some school building where you park in one of the garages and then walk 15 minutes down to davidson math and sciences building right but it's in the David uh, Math and Science Center. Admission is free. Is it free? Fuck yes, it is. So please come to our panel. We would more than happy to chat with fans. We're going to answer questions, uh, take requests. Um, sadly, we are not auctioning off anyone for charity this time. So ladies, I know Anthony is enticing, but you're going to have to... Uh, you're gonna have oh, to wait okay. to. Well, actually, you know what? That's a relief. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, game expo. If still didn't like how you had to do a awkward, awkward creation <laughs> contest. That's, that's hey man, uh, it went to charity, didn't it? Oh no, no this is a game contest. expo. Oh yeah, yeah, that was funny. That was really funny. That was year. for a uh, free shirt. That was for a free shirt we got from E3. For Dragon Age, actually, funnily enough. <laughs> Man, wow, I'm sorry to the person we gave that to. Nah, lots of people like Dragon Age. It's just, you, I just think it's overrated. And I don't you like think it. it's another, and you think, like, freaking Fallout 3 to me is what Dragon Age is to you. I just, oh, no, I agree, I, I man. Agree with you on, I agree with you on Fallout 3, but I enjoyed Fallout 3 more than I did, uh... I know, the, and, I find, I, and I find at least Dragon Age Inquisition mildly entertaining. But I mean, I damn. find certain moments of Fallout entertaining. Yeah, same with Dragon Age. Well, just just uh, no. we're not gonna have this rant. Yeah, both those games are bad. It's like the Anthony Tom, the Fury and Tom bucket list of things they agree are really stupid and overrated. Hey Anthony, we should do super mega awesome. We can play a type of Fallout Three. I hate you. <laughs> Don't dare. <laughs> suggest that hey would you like to sit down and watch dragon age inquisition 
Because oh at least God. watching Inquisition isn't bad, because at least you get to watch a story. Yeah, that's true. Whereas Fallout 3, I watch Desert 90% of uh, the time. Yeah, you just get to watch me be lost in the desert for hours at a time. Uh, <laughs> um, Alright, so, but yes, come to our panel. We're going to be giving away stuff. Uh, we're all, also, we are a headliner for Game Expo this year. We don't have a time for a panel or everything. But we're going to be at Game Expo in Reno, Nevada on July 25th. Uh, we don't have a time for our panel yet, but we're going to be giving away stuff. Uh, we're going to be auctioning a date off with some single members of the staff for charity. All the all of it goes to Extra Life, of course. So, you know, go to Sick Kids. Uh, we're going to be... Uh, I am currently going to be walking some through some really interesting ideas with Anthony and John. To do something really dumb and stupid and fun. So we'll oh, see. Joy. Yeah, Anthony knows every time I say something for a panel, it's like, oh god. What? Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> hey, you know what though? It makes those panels wildly entertaining. It does. The Game Expo one was pretty much perfect, in my opinion. Yeah, and then Snafu, we let things get a little too crazy, but... Yeah, the, the Snafu one, yeah, it was a little out of control towards the end, but still pretty good. We, we need to... So, let me say this time. When we do the proposal thing next time, calm the fuck down, people. We want you... We are gonna get you in a line and have you go in order and pick the best one. Because... Holy shit. Last time was madness. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, come. Come come to our panel. We're happy about that. Uh, speaking of stuff, we have a stream tomorrow, this Saturday, at 11.15 a.m. Pacific Time. Uh, Bremen, John, and Anthony, and possibly me, are going to be doing a heist in GTA Five. Uh, come watch us ho- do our own version of Four Leaf Clover and probably fuck it up. Yeah, it's going to be a more embarrassing Four Leaf Clover. It's going to end up with like four dudes dead instead of one dude dead. Yeah. Um, also, Stephanie, Tori, their show premiered last week and their first actual episode came out this week. And it's fucking it fe- dope. And it features Link from Between Which Worlds. Is- yes. So if you like art and zelda and you know want a really entertaining show to watch that is it it is really awesome uh it's called playing god the art of gaming that's our new show it's gonna be the game of arting (laughs) (laughs) i'm so Uh, done right now um uh, finally uh but yeah playing god the art of gaming it's happening every wednesday uh, I believe next week they are doing Cortana. I can't promise that, though. Uh, yeah. yeah. Also, uh, Bremen stepped in for the comic last week because Tori's laptop was broke. But this week, Tori's back on it. Um, so, yeah. We're going to continue to do comics. I'm actually going to be writing one tonight for two weeks from now. And we already have this Saturday or tomorrow and the Saturday after that written. So, we're on the game with those. Gamecast happens every Tuesday. Uh, Bronson Rants happens most Thursdays. Kind of comes down to uh, my personal workload. Sorry, guys. Sometimes I, uh, you know, I, I, I need to have somewhat of a life. I don't need much of one, but I need to, like, do something besides work, my day job, and work TGA. <laughs> um, I know Anthony feels my pain on that one. Uh, let's see. What else have we got going on? Oh, the raid. The raid is coming back for all you PC nerds. Uh, we're not sure. We're not sure of a time, but the raid is back. Final piece of news. I'm sure some of you saw this. Uh, we are partnering with ACI Moondog. Now you're wondering what the fuck this is all about. Well, uh, Anthony and I are computer nerds. Yeah. Anthony just spacing out. <laughs> Anthony and I, computer nerds. Uh Nick, Yang the PC Gaming. John Yang the PC Gaming. Um, you know, Stephanie, already a PC gamer, just 
can't do much because her laptop's kind of crap, but she's saving up for to build a new machine or buy a new laptop. And uh, we've been wanting to focus more on PC games. And I have been working with Moondog Computers to get this partnership set up where we are selling our own gaming line. Anthony, Nick, and myself, along with the team over at Moondog, who they're nothing but professionals. Uh, Anthony has talked with my coworker Matt several times. He can; these guys can tell you more about computer hardware than almost anyone. And uh, and uh, yeah, so just email. So if you are in the market for a gaming machine, please consider us. Uh, we put out a amazing machine. You know, those machines are great. We have something for almost any price range an email call the store say you're for, say you're looking for the gamer access you want a gamer machine or a machine to do gaming plus whatever extra you do with it at a price range and they'll set you up with the best they can they ship throughout the country those of you outside of the united states we're sorry uh but yeah we're really excited about this uh this is that thing that like we've been teasing for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and we just have to get the deal hammered out so thank you for that anthony you got anything on this uh, currently, no. All right. Well, uh, it, so it, it, things are still kind of like in the initial phase of planning. Yeah, like you can still order a machine, and I'll be giving and like you'll definitely get my insight and the team at Moon Dogs insight. But right now, Anthony and I are still working through build lists. So yeah, um, and all these machines, uh, definitely, you know. Uh, obviously we are making some type of profit off this, um, but, you know, like, that, that helps us, it helps us get, it helps us go to E3 and cover E3, uh, you know, several members of our staff need new equipment, uh, and it helps with that, so if you do buy one, we thank you so much, so, so much, um, so yeah. Uh, I think that's about it. Oh, yeah, we're on iTunes. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. Go to those places. Get our stuff. Anything else, Anthony? Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitch. Subscribe to this podcast on iTunes. Yes. Yes, indeed. And you have an excellent week. Yes. Enjoy the weekend. Bye-bye. Bye.